So I just filmed an entire intro without the microphone on. That's how today's going. Hi everyone, welcome back to another So Craftastic DIY. If you're brand new here, please join the family by clicking the red subscribe button below and also the bell icon so you'll know every single time I post a new video. Today's video is one of my absolutely most requested. I haven't done clay in such a long time, but I'm doing itty bitty polymer clay fall autumn related charms today. They're so cute. Look how tiny they are. So yeah, if you like polymer clay and or just want to make me smile, please click the thumbs up button. Let's try to get to 10,000 likes and hopefully it'll help this video get spread around to YouTube recommended a little more. I'd really appreciate it. If you're not caught up on my most recent videos, check out these right here. I know it's a lot of self-promotion, but I feel like many of you have not seen those because views have been really weird the past couple weeks here. I don't know. Last thing, if you want to hear me talk even more and see what I do the rest of the days of my life when I'm not filming and stuff, you can go on over to my vlog channel, Live Love Sarah Lynn and see the videos I've been posting there recently. But now, with the, wow, did I just flip you guys off? I'm sorry. But now, without further ado, let's get on into the quiet clay charm tutorial. I couldn't snap. First things first, Leo would like to say hi. And now moving on to the clay brands. You can use any type of polymer clay that you want. These are the ones that I'm using for the first charm, which is a cute pumpkin. I'm mixing the three colors that you see here. There's a translucent one, but it really didn't do much at the end. I think you have to add a lot more translucent to make it change the effect of the colors. So don't even worry about adding that if you don't want to. I don't think it really did anything, like I said. I spend a couple minutes kneading the clay and making sure that the colors are completely combined, unless you want a swirl effect, which would also be pretty cool. Once the colors are completely mixed and workable, go ahead and roll that into a ball. I like to do this in the palms of my hands and also on a flat surface and make sure that the table or whatever you're working on is clean as dust free as you possibly can but it is inevitable that some dust will get in clay so at the end i don't show it but you can use nail polish remover after you bake to get dust off with a q-tip pumpkins come in all different shapes and sizes so you don't have to have it perfectly round it'll probably look more realistic if you make it more of an oval and flattened at the bottom now i have the shape that i want basically and i'm taking a toothpick you don't need expensive clay tools for any of these charms if you don't want to use them or if you don't have them so just stick the toothpick into the center and create a hole that goes about halfway through then pull that out and you're going to create the lines on the sides of the pumpkin like this. It's really, really easy to do. Line that up with the hole you created and rock it all the way down to the bottom. I think using a credit card or gift card for this would also give about the same effect. Now I have lines all around and it doesn't matter if they're perfectly even because like I said, pumpkins are not gonna be completely perfect in nature. So after that, I used a very tiny piece of a light green clay that I mixed with a couple different colors and I'm making a teardrop shape first. Then I extended the other side out to make it a rounded diamond shape and you can do different styles, but I think that this is the easiest one. Flatten it out as much as you can and add it to the top like I did here. You can also bend it a little to make it look like it's curved. And once you get the leaf placed on the way you want it, take some type of tool. You can use a sewing needle if you don't have a needle tool, or you could still use that same toothpick if you can get thin enough lines with it. I created a line down the center and then little tiny ones going along the sides. After that, I'm going to create a little loopy vine with a very thin piece of clay. I'm just going to roll that out with the tip of my finger. And I placed it on the pumpkin and made a few loop de -doos. It was hard to do on camera, so I just didn't show that. So now what I'm doing is taking some translucent liquid Sculpey, which is going to help the stem stick in the top. If you don't have this, then just try and get it in there as best as you can and kind of pack the clay around it a little bit to make sure it's secure. But the TLS will help a lot and I just put that on the tip of a toothpick and poked it inside as you could see. Moving on to an acorn, I'm using two different colors of brown, one that's a lighter tan color and a dark one for the top. I'm shaping the base of the acorn now, which is going to be wide at the top and skinny at the bottom, and it's going to come to a point kind of like a Hershey kiss. After shaping that, I'm going to move on to the top, and for this, I am rolling it into a ball first and then flattening it into a thick pancake and making that round and as symmetrical as I can. That's why you see me rolling around the edges, just to flatten them as best as I can. And then I'm just going to take that hat of the acorn, I don't actually know what they're called, 
and I'm going to put that on like this and just kind of flatten it on a little bit. You don't want to make it too flat. You want to make it have some dimension still. Push that on there as best as you can and kind of flatten the edges all around so it blends in with the base more. Question of the video, what is your favorite thing about fall? It could be the food, the pumpkin patches, the leaves changing. Let me know in the comment section below, even if it's spring for you right now. Now it's time to add texture. So I'm using a very tiny blade for this. You could use a toothpick for everything if you want to or a needle whatever you have to achieve the lines that you want and <clears throat> wow I don't know what's going on I think the weather change is making me all sorts of congested right now so I apologize for sounding <laughs> like I can't speak for this part I start off by making zigzaggy triangles and then I'm just going to extend those lines out and crisscross them to make diamonds. You can do this any way you want though, and you want to repeat it along the entire top part to make it look all textured. But before you do, put on a little tiny stem, and you can make this any style that you want. I just did kind of like a little ball and pinched it at the top. Finally, I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin pie or pumpkin pie slice. And for this, I mixed a couple different colors of clay then i put in some allspice which is totally optional but it will make the color look a little bit more realistic and it might give a little bit of scent i didn't smell too much of it after i baked but you might be able to smell a little depending on how much you put in i of course mixed that in rolled it into a ball and then flattened it and once you get that the size that you want take a piece of tan and i mixed tan and gold i think just to get it a little bit shimmery and I flatten that with my fingers. You could use a rolling pin if you want, but I always just usually use my fingers for things like this. I made it a little bit wider and longer than the orange part so I could bring the edges up all around. And when you do this, make sure that the tan clay is very close with the orange so you don't get any bubbles. So now I have that wrapped as tightly as I can and it looks like this. The next part you can do one of two ways. I chose to extend the dough part up more by just using my fingers and dragging it like this so it gives it a little bit of a lip or a ledge on top. But you could also choose to use the exact same color of tan and make a rope and wrap that around the entire top. You could even do kind of a braided crust which would be kind of cool. But if you do it the way that I did, then instead of braiding the crust, you're just going to take a tool, like a needle tool, and make lines along the entire thing. So just do it all the way around. And once you have that, you'll need something very sharp to cut this with. I just use the Sculpey blade. The clay that I'm working with isn't very soft, so using this blade won't ruin any of the work or the shape that i've done but if you're using really soft clay and when you touch it it loses shape you'll want to either put this in the freezer for a few minutes before or bake for just like two to five minutes so you're able to cut it easily without ruining it i decided to cut mine into six pie slices well actually i didn't actually cut the other half yet i'm gonna finish those another time but i'm just gonna show you one slice in this so I'm using some chalk pastels to shade the crust a little bit. You don't have to do this, it's completely optional, but I think it gives it more of a realistic effect. It makes it look like it was actually baked and it has a little bit of a crisp edge. After the shading is complete, if you choose to do that, grab a few needles or pins. I think needles would be easier because they don't have the little balls at the top so they can be closer together. Anyway, you wanna make little textures in the side like I'm doing here. Unless you want to add your quiet face to the side, then you can totally skip this. Just kind of poke and drag a little bit until both sides are complete and they look something like this. The final thing I'm going to do for my pie slice is add a little bit of whipped cream. And for mine, an easy way that I found to do it is just to get a mound and twist it with your thumb and index finger. Again, I'm using TLS here just to help the whipped cream stick better and adhere but you could do it without tls you just have to spend a little bit of extra time to press it on firmly you can choose to use your clay pieces as strictly miniatures for doll houses or even home decor but if you want to use them for anything else such as keychains or necklaces then you want to add an eye pin on top so here i have mine it's a little bit long so i'm using a pair of pliers to cut them down or cut it down um, but I do have three of them, so yeah, I did cut the others as well. I'm dipping the end on my messy bottle of TLS, but the good thing about this is it doesn't dry until you bake, so 
That's why I'm able to still use the stuff that dripped out. And then you just stick that in the charm where you want it and bam, it's done. Well, not yet, you have to bake still. But I have the eye pin in all three of my little tiny charms. And now I'm just going to bake according to the instructions on my specific package of clay. So I did actually 285 since my oven is, if the heat tends to run a little bit lower on mine. So I did 285 for 16 minutes, but you want to experiment a little bit with yours before with maybe a scrap or something like that because I did have an oven that was super hot and I've burnt pieces before. It doesn't look nice. Now you can see that I have some acrylic paints and I'm using a dotting tool to get a quiet face on all three of the charms. You want to be as careful as you can here, but if you do mess up, it's okay. You can just let the paint dry and then use a little bit of nail polish remover to get that off. And also nail polish remover is great at removing dust if any of your charms look a little bit messy because it's so hard to keep clay clean. So yeah, I did eyes on each and then a little tiny mouth with a needle tool. And after everything was completely dry, at this point I put little tiny highlights in the eyes and also little blush spots on the cheeks. Wait for all the paint to dry completely before applying glaze if you want and putting glaze on top will help the paint stay on because acrylic paint can scratch off. So this added clear layer on top will help everything stay in and it'll make it look more finished and shiny if you use the gloss kind. That's it for this one, but if you wanna see more polymer clay tutorials in the future, let me know below your requests and also tell me which charm from this video is your favorite. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And also, you can check out more of my really cool videos over here. I'll put a couple on the screen and some up in the eye card over there. And there's lots of focusing going on with my camera. Oh, oh here's to hoping that my headache gets better. My whole head just blah. Hopefully, you guys are feeling great. And you have a fantastic rest of the day. I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye. Long waves, like always.